Hello Riles. For lesson 5.3, I'm going to want to illustrate a couple of things for you with technology. Um, our goal is to use a construction called the unit circle to get a better understanding of the properties of the sine curve and the cosine curve. Let's um, start with Desmos though. Sorry. Good. There. Let's just go to Desmos. And we're going to type in y equals the sine of x. There's our curve, and here's y equals the cosine of x. Now, something you need to be careful of, let's just hide the cosine of x for a sec. Something you need to be really careful about is that um, Desmos and a lot of graphing calculators and, and graphing applications use a different format of angles than degrees. Um, you'll learn about that in advanced functions. You'll notice that this curve seems to have a period that's like a little bit between six and seven, and we're expecting it to have a period of 360 degrees. This is why it's so important to mention your units every time you say degrees or every time you're talking about an angle. Um, if we go up to options or grid settings here, let's get projection mode on so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, and notice that by default, we're in this radian mode. And some of you might have found that your calculator has gone to radian mode accidentally. Let's go to degree mode. And the problem now is that this represents six degrees. So what I'm going to do is change my view on my x-axis to go, say, from about negative 360 degrees to 360 degrees. And I might just change my y-axis to be from negative 2 to 2. And there is um, a portion of our sine curve. I say portion because, of course, it does go on forever. Um, we could make this look a little bit nicer if you wanted to by making your x-axis go up by steps of 90. And there are our key points that we'll be discussing today. 0, 0, 90 degrees, 1, 180 degrees, 0, 270 degrees, negative 1, and 360 degrees, 0. Okay. Uh, when you're drawing a curve by hand, I'd like it to be a little bit curvier than this. The, the computer is looking for accuracy, but I don't want your curves to look linear like this. Make it nice and curvy. Make sure it never looks linear. All right. Um, on your own, you should have been able to generate the cosine curve. We'll take another run through that today with the um, unit circle. Uh, but there you go. Uh, you're filling in your table of values from lesson 5.2. Should have told you that the cosine of 0 degrees is 1. Cosine of 90 degrees is 0. Cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. Cosine of zero, uh, sorry, 270 degrees is 0. And cosine of 360 degrees is 1. Notice that they have all the same sinusoidal and trigonometric properties. The only difference is their um, dependent intercept. Please don't discuss where they start, because this curve doesn't start at 1. It's, it's come from negative infinity. It will go on forever. It doesn't start or end. OK. All right, back to um, some work by hand. The unit circle. All right. What you want to do is, let's say, consider f of theta being the sine of theta. And we know that by definition, the sine of theta is the ratio of y to r. Okay. So draw yourself a circle. And this circle is going to represent, maybe I should have drawn my axes first. This circle is going to represent your terminal arm going around. So here is an x value. Here's a y value. Here is your angle theta. And this is where we got our definitions from, the sine of theta being the ratio of y to r. Okay. Well, we can simplify these ratios if we set the radius to be 1. This makes it what is called a unit circle. Then the ratio of y to r is going to become the ratio of y to 1. So imagine this circle going through the points 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1 with a radius of 1. That means that that height right there is actually the sine of theta. And just be very, very careful with this conclusion. Because the sine of theta is not measuring a height. It is still measuring a ratio. You're just simplifying your ratio by making your radius 1. It doesn't matter. If we made our radius 10, um, this right here would no longer be the sine of theta. It's, it's going to be the ratio of that height to that height right there. Okay, it would be uh, 10 times the sine of theta. 
let's deal with the cosine ratio here at the same or here let's let's run through some key points notice that um in the unit circle the sine of theta is going to be given just by that y value this is a quick reminder then that the sine of zero degrees is going to be zero the sine of 90 degrees is going to be one the sine of 180 degrees is going to be zero the sine of 270 degrees is going to be negative one and the sine of 360 degrees is going to be back to zero it shows you an awful lot of the properties. It shows you the period of your curve is going to be 360 degrees. It shows you in what quadrant sine ratios are positive. Sine ratios are positive when y values are positive. Um, it should also show you the speed, that if you draw a line that is halfway up this unit circle here, you'll notice that you don't need to rotate through 45 degrees. You only need to rotate through um, 30 degrees. Let me have a computer show this for you. Let's see, sign tracer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, imagine this to be a unit circle. Let me see if I can uh, break the entire thing. I don't think I need that line. There we go. So here's a circle going around, and it is of unit or sorry, of radius one, and there is the ratio of my y value to my r value. Now this right here, I suppose, could represent my origin. I think that's what that line was that I erased. Notice um, that the sine of zero degrees is zero, and then it climbs to a maximum after a rotation of 90 degrees, falls down to an axis at 180 degrees, to a minimum after 270 degrees, and back to a max, or sorry, an axis point at 360 degrees. We could also say are at any angle coterminal to any of these. So the sine curve is going to be at a maximum every single time my terminal arm is right here uh, at an angle coterminal to 90 degrees. That includes negative 270 degrees and um, 450 degrees. All of those angles. Also notice its speed. It is steepest here when it's climbing. Think of yourself as being on a Ferris wheel. When would your vertical speed be the greatest? Right there. When's your vertical speed the slowest? Right there. Yeah, if I can stop it and actually rotate it physically. OK, so the, the point's not tracking anymore. But notice in the first 30 degrees, do you see how high I climb in the first 30 degrees? In the next 60, or sorry, yes, yeah, 60 degrees, I climb the same height. So it only takes me 30 degrees to get half of the way up. It takes me 60 degrees to get the rest of the way up. Over the next 60 degrees of rotation, I'm going down very slowly. Now I'm about halfway down. The next 30 degrees, I'll fall the rest of the way. OK. Let's try a cosine tracer. And I'll spend a little bit more time now discussing. I, I don't think I'm going to mess around with the zoom on this one. Um, discussing what is being measured by the cosine curve, because it looks like it's a little bit harder to follow. Imagine that we're recording this angle theta right here. And the cosine of theta is the ratio of x to r. I'll stop it for a sec. And right there. So the cosine of theta is the ratio of this x value to that radius right there. If we make the radius 1, then the ratio of x to r is going to be x to 1, which means that this distance right here on a unit circle, on a circle of radius 1, is actually the cosine of theta. That is why the cosine of theta is at a maximum of 1 when you are 1 to the right. The cosine curve is going to be at 0 after a rotation of 90 degrees, because you are 0 to the right. What's the smallest value that x to r can be? Well, what's the smallest value that x can be? It's negative 1 when you're 1 to the left. Back to a distance of 0 and back to a height of 1, or sorry, a distance of 1. That's the trick, is that you're translating uh, a horizontal distance and you're graphing it on a height axis. Let's have that animate for us again. So maximum distance right, 0 to the right, negative 1, 0, 1. A little bit faster than last time. 0, negative 1, 0, 1. We're recording the ratio of x to r, but that really just simplifies down to x when you make um, your circle a unit circle.
click on. It should also show you the speed. Let's talk about that speed one more time. So I want to get halfway here. The furthest to the right I can be is one. I want to get halfway to get halfway to the right um, for the cosine of theta to be one half. I would need to rotate through 60 degrees. And that explains why my curve is falling faster there. It's a little bit harder to deal with an analogy here. Maybe think of this as you're standing here. This is a top-down view, and you're standing here, and you're watching someone go around on a merry-go-round. Well, their um, horizontal speed would seem to be the fastest here and here. Their horizontal speed from here to here, it's almost like they're not moving much at all. And from here to here, horizontally, they're not moving much at all. That's when the curve is the least steep. So make sure you have this curve. I like this curve better than what Desmos does. It seems curvier. The thing that I don't like about it is that sometimes students feel like the cosine curve just repeats back onto itself. And that's not the case. This really should be going to the right forever, but we would run out of room very quickly on our screen. OK. Um, there are some challenging questions in the homework um, where you're supposed to try to figure out in what direction things have been rotated. Don't worry too much about that. Make sure you can understand um, the construction of these curves and, uh, and, and not just have them memorized. Make sure that you understand the speed that it's going with. And I'll, I'll give you some um, communication questions about the unit circle. A couple of students have asked about the tangent curve. The tangent curve is not in this course. Just thought I'd show you a quick peek of that. Um, it is. It has discontinuities. We should understand now that the tangent of 90 degrees doesn't exist, and that's why this curve has asymptotes there. Um, yeah, this construction sort of shows you the root of all of these words here. Uh, other students asked about reciprocal curves. You can think of if you if you see yourself or sorry the project a, a sine curve and then you reciprocate that. Well, the reciprocal of one is going to be one. The reciprocal of one half is going to be two. The reciprocal of one tenth is going to be ten. So if I sketch the um, cosecant curve, I'm not surprised that it has vertical asymptotes there. But uh, again, the tangent curve, cotangent curve, cosecant curve, and secant curve are advanced functions that you'll be doing in the course called advanced functions. Okay.